Hey guys, it's me here, bringing you my Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero Episode 9 review. In a nutshell, this episode is both filler and creepy. <laughs> so, this episode begins with some mysterious figure darting into Yuma's room and messing around with his stuff. Now, Yuma being the idiot protagonist that he is, is fast asleep, doesn't even know, kind of doesn't even wake up to know what's going on, and he's dreaming about Katori. So, hmm. And then as soon as the figure hears him say Katori, it breaks up and leaves. Now the next day we go to we, we are in school and Yuma is in some very weird clothes. Now apparently he's been wearing these very weird clothes for the last couple of days now. And the weird thing about this whole thing is Yuma hasn't even noticed. <laughs> he hasn't noticed that he's been wearing weird clothes. And then his, his response is, how am, I supposed to be, how am I supposed to know what I'm wearing? And it's like, oh, Yuma, you are really stupid. It's it's awful how dumb you are. It, it's funny, but it's like, oh, my God, they're taking him to a new extreme. He's like, he's even dumber than Jaden. <laughs> it's like, wow. So then, it, then we also find out that there have been mysterious things going as well. As in Yuma doing really well on the test, and Yuma being able to jump over the really high level of bricks. And so Tetsuo and Katori are like, something must be going on. <laughs> Katori then calls Yuma out in his fashion sense, saying that it's not very good. And then Yuma responds by saying that her fashion sense isn't very good either. So then Katori challenges Yuma by taking him out shopping. So it's a date. I don't care what anyone says, it's a date, they want to go on a date. Now, we move over to Yuma being on the mall, and he's with Katori. And as Katori is late, she's attacked by cats. At least, we assume she's being attacked by cats. They surround her, and then before we know it, some other cats are approached Yuma and told him that Katori has been kidnapped. Come to this place, or else. Now, the place that Yuma goes to is an abandoned mansion, I think. And it's, it's given like this really creepy overtone, and it's like, okay, what could be, what mysterious forces could be at hand here? So then, Yuma goes in, and it is a girl with a cat like hairstyle in a maid's outfit. <laughs> I, 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 just, I was just thinking, okay, this is kind of. Creepy, yeah. Um, okay, and <laughs> and then Yuma's like, "Give me back Katori," and she challenges him to a duel. And if he wins, then he gets Katori. Now, <laughs> she uses a cat deck. A all her cat, all her monsters are like are cats. <laughs> so in her first move. She adds inviting the cat, which lets her add any cat type monster from her deck to her hand. She uses it to summon stray cats. Then she activates another spell called a rally of the cats, which lets her summon another stray cat. Now, when stray cats are in attack mode, they have an effect where if there's another one, if, they, if there are other cat type monsters in the field, then they cannot be selected as attack targets. Tip for this card. Now, since she has two, she has a lock of where Yuma can't attack her. Now, Yuma's turn, and in this duel, Yuma duels by himself without any help from Astro whatsoever, and it shows that Yuma's actually a competent duelist. His, especially his final turn is where he ups his game up, and um, he summons, and forgive me, I hate Yuma's monsters because I can never say the names right. He summons Achacha Archer in attack mode. <laughs> Achacha Archer has an ability where he inflicts 500 points of damage to the uh, opponent duelist every turn. Now Yuma uses his effect and um, Cassie takes damage. And she has a very weird reaction. She's like, oh Yuma, this thing wants to pierce my heart. And it's like... Okay, we've got she's stalk, she's a stalker of a crush. <laughs> it's freaky. So then 
you might activate Flip Flop, which allows him to swing to a bad position of one of his opponent's monsters. And he does that switching um, Stray Cat into a defense mode. Now, he can then attack the other one, and he does so, and it does damage. Now, she does. She activates a, a trap card called Monstrous Cat Transformation, and this lets her summon a monster cat. When monster cat is summoned, all level 1 for monsters are destroyed, and the opponent takes 800 points of damage for each monster destroyed. After chat, Archer is destroyed, and so. <laughs> On Kathy's next turn, she draw she summons another stray cat. Now she exceeds summons. Now Yuma and Astro are like thinking, "Oh no, this girl could be possessed by the numbers." Here comes another monster monster, and like the music changes to the theme that comes up when a monster when a numbers monster comes out, and then it's like a huge delay, and then here comes a twin tail cat lady. <laughs> yeah, and it's not a numbers. So that Astro thinks, and then Astro gets the two dots together. This isn't a numbers. This is a girl who has a crush in Numa, and is trying to get attention through dueling. Now, when she has uh, her twin tail cat, maybe she activates a field spell, and this field spell is weird because it, they go up to us forward to a flower garden, and all cat monsters get double the attack points. Now. Twin Tail Cat Lady has an effect where you can detach one of his XZ's materials to gain 300, no, 800 attack points, my bad. And she then attacks Yuma directly, and his life points go down. Now, this turn, and then before he, oh, before he enters the turn, he activates a trap called, called Fairy Gong, which allows him to special summon a fairy monster that has level 1 or 3. Now he summons Fairy Joe, and 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 then Kavi ends the turn. Now this turn particularly is what impresses me about you. It, it was a very you say like move. I have to say it was every move combined. She used every card right perfectly, and it's like, is this humor? Is this the same humor that doesn't know <laughs> what attack and defense mode are and what summarize means? Astro notes that Yuma duels a lot better when he's dueling to save someone like Katori. Now, Yuma activates the effect of Falling Core, which allows him to discard one monster from his hand, a special summon from his hand. And then he activates um, Growing Pine Cone, which he discarded earlier to activate Falling Cone's effect. And now Yuma has three level 1 monsters, and I was so happy to see Yuma actually. XC summon Baby Dragon. I was like, oh cool, he's actually gonna use that card properly. He's not just a one episode card. Kudos to the writers for actually like bringing that card back. Because it's weak. It has it needs three level monsters and I just it didn't seem to fit in with Yuma's deck, but kudos for actually him using it right. So then he summons Gaga Guy Magician. And now he reduces his level to one and now he can use Baby Dragon's effect. Baby Dragon can let level 1 monsters attack the opponent directly, and with that, Kaku takes a lot of damage. And then he's going, and then Yuma's like in a flow now. He attacks Twin Tail Cat Lady with um, Baby Dragon, and then uses a quick play spell card, uh, Giant Shadow of Egotism, which allows him to increase the attack of his monster by 1000 and reduce the attack of. A monster's attacking by until its, its attack is, is original. Now he does that and then he beats her. And then, yeah, it, this, is, this was impressive because Yuma dueled like a competent duelist. And whether or not he will do this again remains to be seen. But it, it's nice to be a character development as well. So then Yuma goes in. He puts Kathy up, and the two of them have a moment where I think they become friends. You know, she tells him where Katori is, and Katori hasn't been kidnapped. She's been playing with the cats. She was playing with the cats the entire episode. That was it. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, okay. So, back to the normal. So then we go back to the next school day where Yuma's now wearing normal clothes. Uh, him, Tetsuo, and Katori are walking to school, and he's mad at her. 
for having her stood him up the entire day. And then Tappy says hi. And then she and Kuma's like Yuma's like, hey and she has this really fangirl like happiness and she runs off. <laughs> so then Katori gets jealous because uh he because he reveals that them two had a duel. And actually I was quite surprised that they make Yuma know that it's Kathy, considering how stupid they make him from time to time. But kudos. Kudos. And then yeah, that's episode nine. As it's a fillerish kind of creepy episode because from the episode, Kathy like she licks her lips and she's like goes on to these weird monologues about how she's in love with him and it's like very stalkerish like now, uh, <laughs> this this is just I hope that we don't get any more of these like really stupid for this because the numbers plot is actually very interesting and it was a bit sad that they detracted from the numbers plot this episode but next episode apparently sees the return of shark and this will be interesting as well so hopefully you like my video review guys and I will see you guys for the next episode which should be coming up very soon. So until then, take care and stay classy YouTube.